الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم The Quran, the words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, trying to explain uh, the words of Allah سبحانه وتعالى for us to reflect upon these meanings so that we would act according to what Allah سبحانه وتعالى wants from us something that we should never get bored of something that we need to do frequently on a daily basis. It's a duty, it's an obligation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this book not for people just to recite it whenever they would like to or once in a while. Uh, this book has been revealed as means of guidance for the human beings. Human beings are totally astray, totally deviated from the truth unless they, unless they follow the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we are in Surah An-Nisa, and inshallah ta'ala in this episode we'll discuss the ayat, the verses from verse number 80 to 84, inshallah ta'ala. And because these are many verses, we'll just take one verse at a time. And these verses, the context of it in general is about the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but mainly to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That obeying the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is basically obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how the hypocrites, they would show one thing and they would conceal another thing. And the ayat of the Quran exposes them, exposes the ways of the hypocrites for them to be warned and for the believers to take precaution, to take the measures needed to protect themselves from the plots of the hypocrites. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us that we don't check what's in the hearts of the people because this is over the capacity of the human being, but whatever the signs are shown, then we take measures to protect ourselves from the harms and their plots. Ayah number 80 in Surah An-Nisa, we'll start with this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَن يُطِعِ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ اللَّهِ وَمَن تَوَلَّى فَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيظًا Which means, he who obeys the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has obeyed Allah. But those who turn away, we have not sent you over them as a guardian. And as we know that the verses, one is leading to the other, and the verses are in a context. And it's important to reflect upon the Qur'an, to go through the context of the verses, and the verses before and the verses after. And we do the best we can, inshallah ta'ala, as the previous verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear that whatever good happens, this is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever bad happens, it's still from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as part of the qadr as part of the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wrote for the human beings. But at the same time as the previous verses mentioned, the things that people would hate if it happens to them, it's because of their own actions, because of their own sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it as means for whatever bad things to happen to them. Then these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stating a fact here. مَن يُطِعَ الرَّسُولَ فَقَدْ أَطَاعَ الله. Whoever obeys the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqad indeed, no doubt, in reality, ata'a Allah, he had obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The verb is the same, as you see, yuti' and ata'a. Yuti' man yuti' whoever obeys, and this is in the present tense, which means that the person is constantly, continuously obeying the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we know, we obey the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at all times, in all of our affairs. Whatever, whatever he said something alayhi salatu was salam, he did something, we obey him. This is part of the covenant that we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we said, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. We worship him alone. Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
he is the only one to be obeyed, the absolute obedience that has no conditions to it whatsoever. So this is part of the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever obeys the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at all times, indeed he had obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had fulfilled this act of worship and that is the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ tawalla And whoever turns away, tawalla means turns away. Turns away from what? From the obedience of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَمَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيظًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we had not sent you as a guardian over them. Your mission is to convey the message. You're not a guardian over them. Whoever obeys, it's for their own goodness. Whoever disobeys and turns away from the obedience of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had fulfilled his mission and that is to convey the message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him. This beautiful verse, and we'll talk about the lessons towards the end of the episode, inshallah ta'ala, what we learn from these verses. But it's a clear evidence that following the sunnah, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is part of this deen, is an essential part of the deen. And whoever denies the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in its totality like this, he is not a Muslim to start with. And this is by the consensus of the people of knowledge. So the ayah is very clear in this, that the obedience of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the context of the verses, if people would think that after stated that everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the best man ever walked on the face of earth, the final Messenger of Allah, he does not have a control over the affairs of the people. The Messenger وسلم, is a slave of Allah and a Messenger of Allah. The one that runs and maintains the affairs of the people and have the qadr and the decree and the fate, it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pushing away harm, bringing away benefit, it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why this verse comes. When it comes to the Messenger وسلم, then the obedience to him subhanahu wa ta'ala is part of the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there's still a connection here because if someone would say, I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, I will obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and that's it. As we know there's some deviants, those who made their own deviant sects and they called themselves the Qur'anis or so, in which they would say whatever in the Qur'an we would follow but nothing else. This is again if they say this it's based on desire because they are basically denying the Qur'an like this verse and many verses in the Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear that there's a job of the Messenger of Allah. His job is to be obeyed, his rights unto his ummah. The Prophet ﷺ has rights on us. His right is to be obeyed, is to give him victory, is to uh, honor the Prophet ﷺ, is to protect him during his life with one's wealth and one's life and oft also after his death ﷺ by protecting his sunnah and conveying it and honoring the Prophet ﷺ by us uh, following the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And as the verses of the Qur'an shows what's the obligations and what happens if a person opposes this, whoever turns away. Many verses in the Qur'an talks about those who turn away that they would receive the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They won't have any help or support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, giving the speech to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because it hurted the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much that the people turns away from the truth. So the Prophet, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforting the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَمَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَفِيظًا We had not sent you as a guardian. Hafiz is a guardian. Someone that would record their deeds, someone to go after what they do and what they say, and you uh, keep an account of this. No, this is not the job of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recording everything that they do, their obedience and their disobedience. And it's all lessons for all of us. Then the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَقُولُونَ طَاعَةً فَإِذَا بَرَزُوا مِنْ عِنْدِكَ بَيَّةَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ غَيْرَ الَّذِي تَقُولُ وَاللَّهُ يَكْتُبُ مَا يُبَيِّتُونَ فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا Which means, and they say, we pledge obedience, but when they leave you, a group of them spend the night determining to do other than what you say. But Allah records what they plan by night. So leave them alone and rely upon Allah. 
and sufficient is Allah as disposer of affairs. After stating that the Prophet وسلم, is to be obeyed and his obedience is the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whoever turns away, the Prophet وسلم, is not a guardian over them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now talks about the hypocrites and exposing some of their characteristics for us to be warned and for them also to be warned to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the believers to take measures and precautions. Literally it says, and they say ta'a, they say obedience. What does that mean? The hypocrites, they would state that, that they are an obedient slaves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They give the allegiance to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the pledge that they are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is the outside appearance, this is what they say. وَيَقُولُونَ طَاعَ And ta'a here uh, in the Arabic language is, is nakira, means that it, it's so general that they say it so perfectly that they are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam under any condition. This is what they say. فَإِذَا بَرَزُوا مِنْ عِنْدِكْ But then whenever they would leave you, O Messenger of Allah, and barazu, it's a word that means once they appear, when they appear. Al-buruz is when someone is, uh, is apparent. But here in the verse, it means whenever they leave you. Whenever they leave the Prophet ﷺ, they turn away, they say to the Prophet ﷺ, they come with a face full of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Messenger ﷺ. But whenever they leave, بَيَّتَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ غَيْرَ الَّذِي تَقُولُ Bayat, and that's what you saw in the translation, comes from at night. You know, when you sleep at night, this is the bayat, this is what you do at night. So they, they literally translated the verse, although it doesn't really, literally means at night time only. But it refers to what the Arabs, they used to refer whenever someone would hide something. Whenever would someone hide uh, and plot, they would say that he's doing that at night. He's not necessarily doing it at night time, but because night is dark and people can hide their actions and so on, so this is, they would say that. They would say that, that he is hidden something at night time. But really what it means, they would conceal. So this is the literal meaning of it. A group of them, a group of these hypocrites, they would conceal something. They would hide opposite to what you say. They would act opposite to what you tell them to do. So the obedience, it's only in front of you, O Messenger of Allah. But behind you, once they're away from you, they disobey you. They already had decided this. This is not about someone that whenever he's alone, sometimes he become weak or overtaken by his desire and he commits sins. No, it refers to those who already had made the decision to turn away from the way of the Prophet وسلم, but once they're in front of the Prophet وسلم, they pretend to be among the believers this is what the hypocrites they do and once they're away then they would do opposite of what the Prophet وسلم, told them they would hide a group of them they would hide opposite to what you say but then here Wallahu yaktubu ma yubayitun. and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Records, yaktubu, records ma yubayitun, what they are concealing, what they're hiding. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is writing this. And that's why the hypocrites, they are, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, la yaqilun. They have no reason whatsoever. They are not intellectual. And in other verses, la yafqahun, they have no understanding whatsoever. The hypocrites, they are foolish. Why? Because who do they think they are deceiving? They try to deceive the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companions of Allah Anhum. We are easily to be deceived. This is a normal thing. Human beings, they don't know what's inside of their own selves, let alone, you know, sometimes the others. So they would conceal certain things. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, their Creator, He's recording all of this. He's recording on them what they show and what they conceal. Wallahu yaktubu ma yubayitu, their plots against the Prophet وسلم, their evil actions, their disobedience, and it's all warning for us, right? And there are many a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, talks about this, that we need to work on ourselves. Are we only obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, during whenever people are acting in front of people and once we are alone, we constantly disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is a warning 
that we need to be witnessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is recording everything. Everything is recorded, uh, whatever a person shows it or whatever a person conceals it. فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ We'll continue inshallah ta'ala with this verse and the next verses after the break. So stay with us inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu wa rasulillah. Welcome back and with verse number uh, 81 from Surah An Nisa. And the verse talks about the hypocrites, those who, whenever they are with the Prophet, وسلم, they say we are obedient to Allah and His Messenger. وسلم. Once they hide, once they leave the Prophet, وسلم, they plot, they disobey Allah and His Messenger. وسلم, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala records everything, whether they show it or whether they conceal it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet, وسلم, and also for the believers to learn. فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ Therefore, if these facts are known to you that this is what they do, turn away from them. أَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ Turn away from them. Do not try to harm them. Do not try to uh, punish them. أَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ Turn away from them. But then وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ And rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worry about their plots about what they do behind your back. Whatever they conceal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take care of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you rely on him, he subhanahu wa ta'ala would defeat these hypocrites and would not bring any of their actions to exist and they would never be successful. So why their, why their plots might be successful at certain times? It's because of the deficiency in fulfilling the orders of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions radiallahu anhum fulfilled the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfectly, turned away from them, ignored them, and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfectly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sufficient for them. But for those who might be terrified of the plots of the hypocrites, those who would trust, those who would show signs of hypocrisy, and they would give them uh, power and so on and so forth, then they should not blame anyone but their own selves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering the Prophet sallallahu wasallam to turn away from them and to have the tawakkul to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawakkul is when the hearts relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully while taking the means. So the heart is fully relying on Allah. Not to be terrified, not to be worried, but rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while taking the means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered. وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا And it's sufficient uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that you rely on. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as sufficient is Allah as disposer of, of the affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the disposer of all of the affairs of the people. So therefore, rely on Him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. And see the part of reflecting upon the Quran, which is the next verse, is to reflect upon every word in the Quran. But we need to have the knowledge. And we need to have the knowledge and the ways of the early generations of Islam. We don't make the tafsir on the Qur'an on our own, but from the Qur'an, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the companions of Allah Anum, from the early generations of Islam, and even linguistically, and we have to be careful that uh, when we uh, translate the Qur'an, when we reflect upon the Qur'an, the linguistic meanings of the words of the ayat should be described the way it meant when the Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu what these words meant to the Arab at the time. How did they use these words in their dialogue and their speech? Because over time, some of these words might be used differently among the people that are living today. So a person not aware of how the Arabs at the time of the Prophet ﷺ used these words, he might be deceived and he might deceive others whenever the Quran is explained linguistically only. This is a very dangerous thing. That's why whoever study uh, matters of the deen and matters of the sharia uh, one of the very basic levels the person has to study the uh, poetry that was being said at the time of the Prophet وسلم, at times of ignorance even to get to know what the Arabs use these words and how did they uh, talk and speech and so on so that a person would have a proper understanding of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient and that's why we always say repeatedly we do not need anyone but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
we need only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rely on, to worship him alone subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the one that controls everything. Nobody can plot and defeat and win and whatever without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody's under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of this entire life is about the worship of Allah. And the believers, if they are sincere and truthfully worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them and he's supporting them. And the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never change. That's why the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa should all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never be terrified of other than Allah. Never worry about the plots of others, but rather to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be obedient to him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek his pleasure alone. Then the next verse, which shows uh, the, the beauty of it all and how we should reflect upon the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to gain this trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that to the hypocrites and also for everybody to learn, ayah number 82, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا This is the ayah that you hear all the time in the beginning of every episode. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Which is a question. Then do they not reflect upon the Qur'an? If it had been from any other than Allah, they would have found within it much contradiction. This is a question. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ uh, then do they not reflect upon the Quran? This the question is to the hypocrites and for those who do not reflect upon the Quran, what's the matter with them? This is to show how evil there is when people do not reflect upon the Quran, to show how ignorant there is when a person does not reflect and ponder over the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran, the early generations of Al Islam, as we heard before, they received the Quran as rasail, as messages as letters, messages coming to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their creator. So they recited it, they reflected upon every verse, every word to see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. They extracted benefits and the benefits to be extracted from the Quran never ends whatsoever. And therefore they acted upon the Quran. They loved the Quran more than they loved anything else on the face of earth. And this is a question that we need to ask ourselves. If we sincerely want to reflect upon the Qur'an, as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah he said, if you truly want to reflect upon the Qur'an, ask yourself this question. Who is more beloved to you in your heart? To listen to the Qur'an, to be concerned about the Qur'an and to study the Qur'an or something else, whether it's music or songs or whatever these things that people are busy with, if that's which one or the other, then the person would have an idea whether he would be among those who reflect upon the Qur'an or not. It's a lot of work to be done. And that's why those who have the ability to reflect upon the Qur'an, they should not waste their life. But there are steps to be taken. And one of which, of course, is to learn the language of the Qur'an. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ It's sufficient enough for the believers whenever they would hear this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, condemning these hypocrites, that they don't reflect upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that's a warning for us also that we should do something about it. We should reflect upon the Qur'an, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by asking the people of knowledge, getting to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. We're not saying that this is a mandatory thing for every single Muslim on the whole entire earth, but if it's obligatory for every Muslim to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can a person be obedient to Allah? By following the Qur'an and the way of the Prophet sallallahu If a person is not able to go directly, of course, that means this is the people of knowledge only. A person should ask the people of knowledge. And if a person is asking the people of knowledge, those who they trust, the knowledge and the religion, and are teaching them how to make salah, how to give zakah, how to fast, how to be obedient to Allah, how to benefit, how to purify the hearts, how to believe matters of aqidah, then they are basically reflecting upon the Qur'an in an indirect way. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا They, if the Qur'an was from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would find in it many contradictions. اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا اختلافا differences, contradictions, and it's not just one or two, kathir, and they would see many contradictions if this book is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is the book of Allah, this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why there's no contradictions in it whatsoever. Sometimes people might say, might say this verse says this, and the other verse said something else that might be opposite to the first verse. 
This is because of the lack of knowledge. If a person would seek the knowledge, and as the people of knowledge, the matter becomes clear. And there's no contradiction whatsoever in the Quran, and this is by itself is a challenging thing. If there were contradictions in the Quran, would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, أَفَلَا تَدَبَّرُونَ Quran? Shouldn't they reflect upon the Quran? If someone would ask you, uh, or make it an obligation or something very important, tell the people, reflect upon this book. Examine this book. Read every single word in it. Right? And you would not find any contradictions in it. If someone that would know that have contradictions in his book, would he ever call the people to reflect upon its words? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is challenging humanity and ordering the believers and warning the hypocrites that they need to reflect upon the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what we do now and this is what we need to do and this is what needs to be spread all over the Muslim world that Muslims need to listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says not to again to start to interpret the Quran according to our own desires this is a very clear solid knowledge that we need to respect the knowledge of the deen of Islam and knowing the way of the Prophet والسلام, so that we can benefit from the Quran and there are uh, many ways, really, if we want to apply this verse to reflect upon the Qur'an, we need to bring our hearts together whenever we would recite the Qur'an. What I mean by this is our heart, one heart, I'm talking about not plural hearts, the heart of a person. Uh, when you look into your heart, you would find your heart distracted in so many different places, especially nowadays with all of the different fitan and tribulations and all the different technologies and phones and so on. You find your heart distracted so much. Right? And this is something that would make a person waste his life. That's why whenever we would sit and read Quran, put all of these things away. Turn your phone off. Turn your computer off. Right? This is job. This is work to be done. People, if a surgeon is doing surgery, he would not answer the phone probably, whenever, hopefully, whenever he's doing surgery. Right? Because this is a serious work. His heart is present with him. Imagine someone is doing a very difficult surgery but his heart is somewhere else this is a very dangerous thing this is more important the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so setting a time every day in which we would reflect upon the Quran and bring the hearts together focused and the heart to be present in reciting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to the people of knowledge and learning from them the explanation of the Quran to act according to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extracting the benefits and this is also the job of the people of knowledge and the Quran never ends with this whatsoever whenever we recite the Quran we need to understand that we are the ones that are meant by the Quran this is means for us to reflect if we recite the Quran some people they recite the Quran only to seek some blessings mashallah the Quran is a book that is blessed this is a book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down and it's mubarak, it's, it's blessed book. It's khair, it's good, never ends. But we need to recite the Quran while in our hearts we understand that we are meant by this Quran. This Quran is sent for us, talking to us and examining our affairs and our belief and so on. So this is one of the very important means for us to have the reflection and to, to ponder over the Quran. Repeating verses in the Quran repeating this is something that the Prophet ﷺ would do once in a while he would repeat the same verse over and over and over again especially in the night prayer there are examples of this and also the companions radiallahu uh, anhum to know the reasons why these verses were revealed the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ uh, to extract the benefits uh, to read the Quran as Imam Al-Ajurri rahimahullah he has a beautiful small book that talks about the manners of the people of the Quran he kept on asking questions when a person is reciting the Quran he should ask himself these questions when am I going to be among those who have khushu' and humbleness and devoted when am I going to be among the ta'ibin when am I going to be from the repentant ones when am I going to be from the believers when am I going to be from the good doers and so on this is a person that is reacting to the Qur'an. When the Qur'an talks about the believers, the reciter of the Qur'an is asking himself this question. When am I going to be among these people? When the Qur'an talks about the hypocrites, talks about the disbelievers, the reciter of the Qur'an would say and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him from being among these people, to distance oneself from those who would have these evil characteristics. And that takes means and effort. And it's a beautiful struggle 
because the reward is something that nobody can imagine because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most merciful so this ayah needs a lot of work from us to reflect upon the Quran and uh, if people reflect upon the Quran they would find that there's no contradictions in it whatsoever that's why when sometimes disbelievers or people would throw onto you some of the doubts or some of the verses this verse contradicts this verse it's because people are not reflecting upon the Quran if the more the person reflect, the more that he would feel, see there's no contradictions whatsoever. And then the next verse, verse number 83, still with the hypocrites and showing their evil affairs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَبْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَى أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ لَاتَّبَعْتُمُ الشَّيْطَانَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Which means, and when there comes to them information about public security or fear, they spread it around. But if they had referred it back to the messenger or to those of authority among them, then the ones who can draw correct conclusions from it would have known about it. And if not for the favor of Allah upon you and His mercy, you would have followed shaitan except for a few. وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوْ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوِي These hypocrites. Some people, they do this. Right? And we should not say only hypocrites so that we say, Alhamdulillah, this is not us. I know myself that I'm not a hypocrite. People would say that. No, we should not uh, uh, purify ourselves like that. We should blame ourselves. We should uh, make sure that we might, uh, that we have the fear of hypocrisy. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they used to all of them fear hypocrisy for themselves. And that's why Umar radiallahu an, the second Khalifa, the one that is given the glad tidings of Jannah during the lifetime of the Prophet sallallahu who he was, uh, would go to Hudayfa radiallahu anhu and asking him that the Prophet sallallahu named me among the hypocrites. So this is a very important task for us to take, but we'll discuss the meaning of this verse in the next one right after the break. So uh, stay with us inshallah. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ba'd. Verse number 83 from Surah Al-Nisa about some of the people whenever a matter comes to them from security or fears. What it means by this is public security, public fear. Something, news that comes to someone about what happens. And this has a, an incidence or things that happen at the time of the Prophet sallam whenever the armies are sent for an expedition for uh, a battle to, to fight and the hypocrites will bring the news and they would spread it among the people they would spread it among the people that are the enemies are coming or this or that and the reason they would do this is to spread the fear among the people and this is uh, by itself is in, in, in the war affairs it's well known where the morale of people right that they call it the morale of the people is very, is very important in which they would try to defeat their enemies by spreading rumors, by spreading fear about the, the status of their enemies and how powerful they are and so on. So the hypocrites, they would do that in the ranks of the believers. They would spread rumors and they would say that you're so weak you cannot defeat your enemies. The enemies you have this and have that. And they would start bringing rumors that a group of people, those who went that the Prophet ﷺ sent to the battlefield, they have been defeated. So people would feel hopeless or things of that nature. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning against this, that if a matter comes to them, whether it's about public security or matters of fear, that would affect the community, affect the people, adha'ubih. Adha'ubih means they would uh, spread it all over the place. They would broadcast it all over the place. They won't keep it to themselves, they would spread it. وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ And we have to be careful what, when we look at our affairs today. Right. Anybody that get any news, many people, they would just spread whatever they receive. Whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. And this is something that is very dangerous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that in the context when he's talking about the hypocrites. And we have to be careful with all of the ease in spreading information. A person receiving news, Allah knows best whether it's right or wrong, spreading it and sharing it with everybody, thinking that he's doing what he should do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this is what the hypocrites they do. They spread whatever something comes about public security, things of that nature, rumors that would affect the people. 
the people living in that country, the people, the communities, and so on, they would spread it. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ If they would return it back, refer it back to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to those who are in charge of them, those who have the knowledge that are able to extract the correct understanding of these uh, matters of affairs of matters of security or fear they would understand what these news or what these matters means so what's the ayah is implying here that whenever something comes that would affect the public security the public matters of fear and so on people should not spread these types of rumors but rather they should go to the people of knowledge and the people of authority and they will be able to know the correct way of how to deal with it and that's how people, when they're living together, they complete one another. They benefit one another. But for every single person living in any community to think that they can do all of the roles of everybody else, it doesn't exist on the face of earth. There has to be rulers, and there has to be those who are ruled. There has to be people of knowledge. There has to be students of knowledge and people, those who would benefit from the people of knowledge. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human beings. And that's why out of the respect to each position and each profession even, a person, if he's sick, he goes to the doctor. He doesn't go to an engineer or a plumber. He goes to the doctor, the one that will be able to benefit him by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the same thing, respecting those who are in authority and trusting them in which the person would make sure that things are not spreading evil and so on. وَلَوْلَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ If it's not the bounty of Allah and His mercy upon you, you would have followed the shaitan except few. Whether it's referring to the, ver to the meaning of this verse, that means of destruction and fear and so on would spread if you do not have this type of knowledge. This is a beautiful part of knowledge that people need to learn to act according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And that's by the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his mercy. Otherwise, you would follow the ways of shaitan. Shaitan has his ways to spread fear among the people, to spread rumors, to spread lies. And we have to be careful, there's a ruling here. Whoever uh, just narrates a lie, he's not the originator of the lie, he just narrates it. He is one of the liars. As the Prophet ﷺ said clearly in one of the hadith, that whoever narrates a lie, he is one of the two liars. So it's not just about narrating, it does not take the person away from blame, he's also to be blamed if it's a lie. That's why we have to be extremely careful, careful not to spread rumors and to spread these types of evil things. The last verse in this episode, inshallah ta'ala, it's a, it's a very comprehensive one that is a life-changing one. Each verse is a life-changing one. Well, this 84, verse number 84, it's a life-changing one because it teaches us how to perfect our affairs as human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَا تُكَلَّفُ إِلَّا نَفْسَكَ وَحَرِّضِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَكُفَّ بَأْسَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَاللَّهُ أَشَدُّ بَأْسًا وَأَشَدُّ تَنْكِيلًا which means, so fight, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the cause of Allah, you are not held responsible except for yourself, and encourage the believers to join you, that perhaps Allah will restrain the military might of those who disbelieve, and Allah is greater in might and stronger in punishment. فَقَاتِلْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ لَا تُكَلَّفُ إِلَّا نَفْسَكَ If you remember the previous verses, he was talking about fighting for the sake of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordering the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions radiallahu anhum to fight for the sake of Allah, those who oppressed them and to uh, spread the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had the means to do that. They are the people of authority. And as a rule in Islam, when it comes to fighting in jihad and battles and wars and so on, it's only uh, the decision made by the people of authority, not made by individuals. This is not an individual task. This is something to be done by the people of authority, the people of the state. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to fight for the sake of Allah. لا تكلف إلا نفسك You would not be held responsible except for your own self. And then وحرد المؤمنين And encourage the believers. Why did we say that this verse is a life-changing verse? Imam Sa'di rahimahullah, he said this in his tafsir. He said this is the most perfect state that a human being can be in. What is it? It's to do what you're ordered to do in the most perfect way. And that of course needs knowledge. To know exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you and you do it the most perfect way. If you do that, that's not sufficient. 
that's not perfect yet. Till waharridin mu'mineen, till you encourage the believers to do the same. So these two things makes a human being in a perfect state to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to do and to convey that to others, to encourage others to do the same. And this is what we need today and at all times that we need to learn and to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. If you know that salah is an obligation, the second pillar of Islam, then we should do the salah, make the salah in the most perfect way. Men in the masajid, in the houses of Allah. The houses of Allah should be full of the men, Muslim men, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day. That needs effort, yes. Needs patience, yes. And you are responsible for your own action, first and foremost. And this is our responsibility. This is our main responsibility, is to get ourselves to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then a person going to, and this is just one example, going to the masjid, is that sufficient to be perfect? Not yet. Till you encourage others to do the same. Encourage the believers. And the same thing with enjoying good and forbidding evil. You stay away from haram and you do the best you can and encourage others in the most decent way, in the nice way. Why? Because a person has to have authority to change things with their own hands and so on. So this is the most perfect state at all levels when a person would do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered and to encourage others to do the same. Muharrid means is like not just any encouragement, is encouragement with so much dedication in it and so much effort and energy to be put in encouraging people to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. Then although in the context it talks about fighting for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the Prophet ﷺ to do so and then he showed the benefit of fighting for the sake of Allah. If it's done in the right way, this is one of the means of victory to the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَكُفَّ بَأْسَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا that may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would uh, uh, restrain the might of the disbelievers the disbelievers they can have so much power so much wealth Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is above all and He is the owner of all things and if people would obey the orders of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala would restrain the might of the disbelievers and their plots and their wealth and their strength is nothing compared to the power of Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from the believers to be sincere and to be truthful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wants from the believers not to fear the disbelievers, not to fear their enemies, not to imitate their enemies. How can a believer would imitate his enemies, wear the same clothes that they wear, uh, act in the same manner that they act, looking up to them, as if they are the model in this life. If they celebrate some celebrations, they would follow their celebrations. Their holidays, they follow their holidays. What is left, right? It's not just about making salah or this or that. It's a believer they have to distance themselves away from the ways of the disbeliever, especially these are ones that are plotting against them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed their affairs in the Quran. And they show one thing and they hide another thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering the Prophet sallam, that if doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered and encouraging the believers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restrain the might of the disbelievers. He did not say, may you restrain the might of the disbelievers. He said, may Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that can protect the believers. And we see what's happening to the Muslim ummah all over the world. Uh, where is the sincerity in turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone? Sometimes the believers that are weak and oppressed, this is, uh, happens and uh, this is something that is temporary in the history of the believers. But whenever it happens and the believers are weak physically, they are oppressed physically, then they should turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. They should hold fast to the deen of Allah. They should be patient in the, in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to restrain and to push away the might of the disbelievers. The Prophet sallallahu and his companions, they were in that state in Mecca and they were weak and oppressed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory. But what level of iman, what level of actions and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How did they deal with each other? The brotherhood in the deen of Islam. The brotherhood for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was not about nationalities and color of the skin and all of this. It was because la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah that gave that bond to all of them together. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them victory over their enemies because it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the most wise. Wallahu ashaddu ba'san wa ashaddu tankila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater in might and he is greater in punishment. 
So no need to rely on other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a great meanings that should be present in the hearts of the believers. Some of the Muslims, they might feel weak when they would see the might and the power of others. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, always remember this, and this is the effect of reflecting. Wallahu ashaddu ba'san wa ashaddu tankila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more uh, stronger in might. He's the creator of might itself. All of the might and the power that human beings they have from the time of Adam alayhi salam till the day of judgment, if it's all collected to be one thing, who's the one that created all of this? In them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that has the, the might. He is Al-Aziz subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. الذي لا يغلب no one can defeat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be victorious no matter what but it needs from the believers to be truly sincerely turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater in punishment if those would continue to be in matters of disbelief these verses give us great lessons and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us benefit from this and to be obedient to Allah and to be obedient to his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam we need to revive the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by learning it and following his way and warning ourselves from the characteristics of the hypocrites and to stay away from their affairs and to encourage others to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be established i ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us benefit from what we heard wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كفلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا تدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا